stopping to that. I'm stopping him. I don't give a fuck what nobody. I'm stopping him. I don't care what nobody says. They, they say you hit very hard. You're a softball. I'm, I'm stopping him. What if he tries to clinch you to death? I, no, I'm stopping him. We got we working on shit already right now. One no two clinch. Got, no matter what he got, I'm stopping him. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I'm stopping him. And if I if I don't, I'm hurting for twelve rounds. I guarantee I'm hurting him for twelve rounds. Welcome to Body Work. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. It feels so good to be back. <laughs> man, it is heating up, man. And one of the one of the premier fights, man, to close out this year happens in Sagittarius season. When Devin Haney takes on Regis Proway for his WBC championship belt. You know what I'm saying? With Devin moving up. Now, before I get to the crux of this video, you know, it's, I, I've been looking at Regis, man, in the build-up. And a lot, of, a lot of people are not covering him. You know, you can go get an a interview over here with Ellie. You know, he's starting to do more things. But I think under the radar, Regis is actually really selling this fight. And it's a matter of who you have a taste for in this, um, you know, because let's be honest, right now it's a popularity contest. A lot of people are trying to act like they don't know who Regis is. Even when the subject comes up with the Devin Haney and Regis, everybody want to talk about Tank and Shakur and all this. And I think that that's really playing into Regis Pro Gray's hand. You know, um, the first glimpse of this was the press conference when um, his, uh, his training coach, you know, of over 10 years was coming out and basically saying like, look, man, like they actually expressed probably what Regis was expressing, even though Regis needed a good dance partner, which Devin Haney is a good dance partner with Regis because of the, the mysteries, the, the clash of styles, like everything this, this fight entails, you know what I'm saying? Whether the power of transfer, you know, I've even, even seen slights at Regis's boxing IQ, you know, this, uh, Everybody's enamored with Devin Haney and, you know, his win over Lomachenko when he did that to a southpaw, you know, uh, don't really consider the numbers, you know, things like that. So a lot of things getting skewed in the matchup, and I think in a roundabout weird kind of way, I think it's actually panning out really good for reason. You know, when I sit back and think about it, I said, man, it seemed like, you know, a couple guys are playing checkers, and it's a few guys that's playing chess. And I believe that Regis Progray is actually playing chess. What do you mean, Mike? Listen, in that interview, his coach and trainer over 10 years said, like, basically, like, like, listen, man, like, you saw that performance against Cirilla. You thought that you was going to get, you was running up on somebody that didn't look so well, you know what I'm saying? Just like how people were looking at, let's just say, Frank in his last performance. It was just like that performance when they seen Chris Colbert. Like, you know, you, you, it was like almost, almost like you was kind of looking like food, you know, and it, his trainer expressed that. And a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, mainly the Devin Haney fans, they were basically saying, oh, man, look at this, man. With this guy, he's just nervous energy. It's like, no, like he looked at it like, look, it's four champions in that division. It's four champions in that division. And they pick Regis as if he's somebody to pick on. But ultimately... He's the number one guy at 140. So he expressed, you know, probably what, you know, the camp probably talked about in the, in the feeling like, oh, man, he thinks, because they pretty much said it. You know what I'm saying? They've been talking like we just just some pushover, like they're going to go in there and maul them over. Surprisingly, when it comes down, when people can actually, you know, focus in on the fight and they can actually get Bill Haney to actually talk about Regis, I think Bill Haney is the only one, at least by mouth, in video, the only one that's really paying this man is respect. So I think the sentiments that his strength and conditioning coach expressed are legit sentiments. You know what I'm saying? They're looking at Regis like a pushover. You know, and I almost, I kind of look at it almost like how a lot of times they say when Canelo get ready to fight somebody, you actually got to show some kind of vulnerability leading up to that fight. It was like Danny Jacobs has shown some vulnerability and he got that fight. You know, John Ryder. You know, a lot of people fail to realize this, but when he was fighting up against, um, I think that was, it wasn't Joe Smith, who was that? That was, um, 
the guy he fought before Canelo. When he was fighting that fight, that man actually hurt his hand in that fight, you know what I'm saying, and which afforded John Ryder the opportunity to win that fight. But he looked real vulnerable, you know, going into that fight. And a lot of people say that, yeah, Canelo will wait. Like, how when that, that, that third Triple G fight, that that thing didn't book in right away. That thing booked in right when um, Triple G fought um, that guy, Murata, who had waited on. He waited on this guy for two years. The guy, Murata, was doing some hellacious body work. He just took too much water in the ship and his endeavor to actually stop Triple G. He got kind of close. He put in some good work, but I think he just took on too much damage. And that performance that Triple G had in that one, that's when everybody was saying, yeah, the, the curtain's pretty much done on him. You know, he, he you know, he chose this guy at a ripe old age. You know, when you fast forward to now, and you can't even tell that Triple G was a boxer. But he showed a lot of vulnerability, and you think about the timing in which Canelo actually fought him. It was almost like, yeah, he showed some vulnerability, and that's why he's taking it on. You know, Loma, you know, two years before the fight, two and a half years. I mean, we're almost going on three years now. Where Devin, Devin Haney saw a fight, and he said, man, this guy, Loma, he's too old and too small. You know, fast forward two and a half years, Devin fights him. He was too old and too small. But he showed a lot of vulnerability, especially in that Jermaine Ortiz. Very ripe for the picking. And I find it very crazy that right now, in this day and time, like this past week, it's like, <laughs> oddly enough, people that are actually rising up the stock in Lomachenko. I'm like, hold on, man. Lomachenko had already lost three times. T.O. didn't get any credit when he beat him. You know what I'm saying? T.O. didn't get any credit. Everybody say that Jermaine Ortiz even beat the guy. You know what I'm saying? I had him beating, I had Loma beating Jermaine Ortiz. I had Devin actually beating Loma, again, by the hair of his chinny chin chin. But he showed vulnerability going into this fight. Let's be real, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? I think that's why they pick Regis. I think that they think he's gonna look a lot like Zorilla. And I think what's gonna happen, it's gonna be a lot like um, the performance that Jamel gave with Canelo, right? People would look at that performance and, you know, his stock ever since then. Even me, I had my fair criticism. I was like, man, look, I know these numbers. I showed the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. I'm not going to tell you throw out the stats over here. You know what I'm saying? This is fact-based content. This is the alternative to opinion-based. But factually, when you look at it, I know the numbers. I know what Jamel Charlo is capable of and the amount of body attack and the body work and the level of power punches and activity that my fighter, being one of my fighters in my boxes to watch, just like we just Progray, just like Richardson Hitchens, just like Tank, just like Bam, just like um, Inouye. All these guys, I know these guys, I know their numbers. When I analyze their fights, I look at all of that when I consider my analysis on these fights and I break it down. But I believe that since Jamel Charlo's stock has went down, if he were to get back into that ring with Tim Zhu, being so overly confident by fighting that version of Tony Harrison, I don't know what version of Tony Harrison that was. Tony Harrison is one of the most, he's, he's, he's a very skilled boxer. You know what I'm saying? Very skilled boxer. I don't know since the absence of his father, you know what I'm saying? Like since he passed, he don't have him. I, you know, things change. People grow. Yeah, some inactivity. He said he had been you know, straining himself down, like, you know, cutting weight, and, you know, all kind of different things, you know what I'm saying? But I believe that the way this fight is going to play out with Regis and Devin is going to be a lot like how that fight between Jamel Charlo and Tim Zhu would play out, in which Tim Zhu is way overconfident, he's going to judge a lot by this performance against Canelo, and Jamel going to go in there and stop him, right? So, we have the reason why we got here at this Regis Pro Break fight. You know, that never, you know, never mind the fact that this was best laid plans between Devin Haney and Eddie Hearn. You know, he said he was gonna go get undisputed and come right on back. That's why I, I don't, I'm no longer getting distracted by any sidebar conversations. You know what I'm saying? When that deal, when he actually tweeted out that he made a call out to Eddie Hearn, I already knew, I had been already knew. Church had already told us that one was going up to 140. I don't know how I'd be getting, you know, sidebarred into getting into these other conversations and doing things and putting my energy towards stuff that I know not to be true. But I think that one, in this game of chess, he chose Regis based on a poor performance against Cirilla. And again, I can't reiterate this enough, 84 punches landed, they set a record for the least amount, I'm talking about total, 84 punches landed. You don't get that. 
especially when the belt's in hand, you people let their hands go. I think that the, you know, the pressures of being home and all this, that's what we just had attributed to. It was a lot of different little factors. The fact that, you know, he had been wanting to fight. He had been wanting to, you know, get back active and Regis has been a boogeyman of some sort. A lot of people have been ducking and dodging. They'll try to dismiss Regis, but it's crazy. If you if you rewind back, you look at a lot of these videos about Regis, you don't hear nothing like the conversation right now that's going on around Regis. It's just like everybody that's on the opposite end of Devin Haney, they get slandered. Right now, they're slandering Shakur. They're slandering Tank. Nobody's focusing on Regis, but guess what Regis doing? Regis is actually playing chess because when his, his coach and trainer and Bill and... You know, and all in Devin, they was cutting them off with the press. We just was just sitting back, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let these, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let them do this, you know what I'm saying? I already know what it is. He said on numerous interviews, I'm stopping Devin Haynes. I'm stopping Devin Haynes. He's like, he think it's sweet. He picked on me. It's like, it's just like Bud when he came up and he had all those different options, but he chose Jeff Horn. He chose Jeff Horn. Fortunately, Bud had the skills to pay the bills, but it's much like, you know what I'm saying, they were looking at Regis like, oh, what's the most league? Now they're latching names on to Matias and looking like, I've heard a little bit about I'm like, man, you've never said that name before. There's no reason to say it now. And I think that all of this is working to Regis' advantage. Um, two, Regis has been putting in role work. Regis has been training even before his last one. I've been always constantly updating and showing about how Regis pretty much he trains. You know what I'm saying? He said he got a, a gym built in his house. You know, he's been adamant about staying in shape and, you know, having a nutritionist to help cut weight. He can do it better. And most importantly, the very, very point of this video, this man enlisted Roberto Durant. Mr. Hands of Stone. One of the Four Kings back in the day. Name up in lights, legendary, whenever you took nothing but respect. Everybody knows, regardless of skin color, regardless of where you're from. If you know anything about Roberto Duran, you know that that man was a true warrior. That he embodied, you know what I'm saying, what boxing is in the sport. Hands of stone, you know what I'm saying? And I think that that says a lot because a lot of people say, oh man, the man got short arms and he don't have good footwork. Even Regis said, look, man, as far as boxing, he's like, I've been getting away with, you know what I'm saying, doing what I do and just getting the job done. He said, but this is going to be skill for skill. And I've heard that interpreted as people thinking that he's going to go in there and try to outskill Devin Haney. And I think that went right over a lot of people's heads. You know, what he was really saying was, even though I have not been utilizing all these things, I've been able to get the job done like this, but that does not mean I don't have the capacity, the capacity to box and show skill. Because a lot of people, when it comes down to the knockout artists, mainly the ones who don't leave it into the judges' hands, yes, they can box. Yes, they can box to survive or box to point, but they know that you leave it into the judges' hands, hands all the time you can get robbed on the scorecard you know i'm not i'm not going to uh salute novelty boxing but we just seen a recent case with a heavyweight division basically it was just an, an indictment on the heavyweight division you know and i was saying oh man y'all gonna call fury the best man on the planet because he beat Deontay wild i said man that's gonna come around and bite you and everybody would say oh man he's a trail he's a trail but novelty boxing just showed like tyson fury he underestimated his opponent. And um, lastly, this is the, the most recent comparison I've seen to this. Aside from the Jamel Charlo and Canelo fight, it's probably the Inouye and Fulton fight. Where they were saying, oh man, he's a hype job. A lot of people have been coming around to call Regis Progress a hype job. <laughs> I can't make this up. But the fact that Stephen Fulton thought that Inouye was a hype job. Thought that you know, being bigger and all this stuff was going to, you know, all these things, you know what I'm saying, short, longer reach, thought all these things was going to be to his advantage. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I think this is how Regis Progray is getting overlooked right now. I think the man is playing chess. You know, I think that he's flying under the radar, and I believe, man, if they don't stir this ship right, man, they're heading Devin Haney down a dark alley. You know what I'm saying? unarmed <laughs> against Regis Progress. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. You know what I'm saying? I thought that it was good because it's one thing if you're trying to go, maybe if he 
went and was consulting. What if he was consulting with Sugar Ray at this point in time? You'd be like, mm, Sugar Ray, okay, well, he's going to try to box. He's going to stick and move. You know what I'm saying? This and that. No. He went for Roberto Duran. And what Roberto Duran, hands the stone, was known for getting somebody out of there. And true to form and true to everything that Regis has been saying, regardless of people listening to him or not, he's saying he's not playing no game. He's not trying to put in no overtime. He's trying to come in there and put in that pain. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just looking. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's going to occur in Sagittarius season. You know, aside from the David Benavidez and Andre fight, which I call the spookiest fight in boxing, I think that this, which I'm labeling dreams and nightmares with Devin the Dream Haney and Regis Rugeru Progre as the nightmare, sneaky good fight. It's not getting the attention that they want, even though I like their promo. The promo is real fly. You know, they talking that stuff and the build up and everything is getting pretty good if we can only focus on Devin Haney and Regis Progress. I know Regis is locked in, you know, as far as, you know, the other side, I'm not sure what they're on. You know what I'm saying? I think Bill, you know, uh, having to be out in front of everything and he shot at asthma. If he know where he has to land, he has to do this and this and that. He's the only one that I heard address Regis in the manner in which he needs to address. You know what I'm saying? You got to at least respect your opponent. Because if you don't respect your opponent, man, they're going to be like, back pockets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Regis is more than capable of doing it. What do you think about this fight? Is it getting the, the detention it deserves? Is it getting its, you know what I'm saying, praises? Is it getting the, the proper attention? Are people going overboard when it comes to Devin and underestimating Regis? Or is you really just think Regis is just the performance that he had, that's really Regis? Well, that means you haven't been following him. Check out my boxes to watch collection you know saying a lot of these boxes are highlight even the pre-build up to their fight i try to give them a proper analysis i look at copy box i look at the average activity and over the years i actually grown to see okay how they do that's how i know when they're off or when they're on or what's going on or pretty much can know how they want to do against their opponent and i think we just is doing right by playing chess on this one would love to get your comments and your feedback man if you're catching this on the playback Salute, man. Don't be afraid to smash my like button. You know what I'm saying? Smash my like button. Put that stick out on the like button. You know what I'm saying? Put that jab out on that like button for your boy. Share the video. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here begging for change and all this. If you want to show your support, the cash app is there. You can super chat. You know what I'm saying? If you like, I don't ask for all of that. You know, I just asked for a like button or a comment or some feedback in, in regards to what you think about this fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't do yes and then you don't have to agree. But um, are you as excited about this fight as I am? You. Are you excited about this? I am. You know what I'm saying? It's a legacy fight. It's going to really show us where Devin Haney is. It's going to put that GPS on Devin Haney because at the end of the day, this side can talk and this faction can talk. And this segment and this section can talk and these people can do this but at the end of the day it's gonna be three people in the ring regis devin and the ref and they got to do all the talking inside the ring by putting down the ones and the twos anyways thanks for tuning in here at body work boxing but we don't take things for face value we do that body work Welcome to Body Work.